evening. Um, welcome back for the second meeting of the Lansdowne Boundary Change. Um, thank you all for coming tonight. Um, tonight, what we're going to do, we're going to review some of the new information and answer some of the questions you had from the last meeting. We're going to um, then break into three small groups where you're going to have the opportunity to develop options. Uh, what you're going to do is we're going to have um, some sketch maps on the table and um, an interactive spreadsheet where you're going to get the see the dynamic changes as we move planning blocks um, between uh, boundaries. Uh, and then you're going to present that information out and we're going to just discuss some of the um, limitations and um, opportunities that exist. So just to go over the boundary change objectives again, um, one of the primary objectives is to reduce overcrowding in the region. We want to create viable, successful boundaries to effectively utilize the attic capacity at Lansdowne Elementary School. And we want to support diversity among schools that reflects the community and the school system as a whole. Uh, the reason behind this boundary change process is that we are doing a reconstruction and expansion of Lansdowne Elementary School that's going to uh, result in a 709 seat school from 313, so 400 um, more or less additional seats. Lansdowne Elementary School is currently over capacity at 156% and Baltimore Highlands is 123%. Participating schools are Baltimore Highlands, Lansdowne Elementary, and Riverview Elementary School. As we discussed uh, at the last meeting, uh, Halethorpe and Relay are not included uh, because they were recently participated in the Southwest Boundary Change Study and students adjacent to these boundaries were changed at that time and we try to avoid changing students multiple times. Um, when you're developing your boundary options tonight, uh, it's good to refer back to these uh, slides. These are your boundary study considerations and they are from um, policy and rule 1280 as outlined. So you want, as you're developing, you'll want to think about these considerations. So it's maintaining the continuity of neighborhoods, maintaining and incre or increasing the diversity among the schools to reflect the diversity of the region or school system as a whole, uh, the impact of transportation patterns or pedestrian uh, patterns. Uh, minimizing the number of times an individual student moves. Uh, efficient use of the affected schools, so using the uh, added capacity at lands down um, effectively. Long-term enrollment and capacity trends and future capital plans. Uh, the location and feeder patterns. And then uh, phasing in boundary changes uh, by high school, which this boundary process doesn't um, look at high schools or middle schools. We're only dealing with elementary school boundaries. Um, some additional considerations as you're looking at these is you want to look at the geographic features such as railroads, creeks, major roads, um, when you're starting to develop or, or moving um, planning blocks. Um, we don't, the other one is uh, elimination of satellite areas, which are um, areas that are not contiguous to the boundaries. Um, this was a practice that was done back um, in the 70s, but there, we don't have to consider that one in this process. Um, some of the questions that you had from the last meeting, uh, where can I find information on the boundary study? Um, on our website, under the what's happening section, uh, if you, when you go on there, on the left hand side, there's a blue section, it's what's happening under construction. There's a link to the lands down boundary process. All of the information that you receive at these meetings, there's uh, live links to uh, the video feeds. Um, and there's also any emails that we receive from the public are also there. At this point, we have not received any emails from the public. Um, as we do, I will email out um, information to you um, to let you know that they're there. Do enrollment projections factor in the approved residential um, development? Yes, the enrollment projections um, do include any residential development that's proposed in the area. We get that information from Baltimore County Planning and they give us the number of units. In your packets tonight, you actually have a map showing the proposed developments. They're very minimal. It's only about, I think, six total units that are unbuilt. You'll see that the actual development and then you'll see the portion of the development that's already built out and the remaining units yet to be built. Um, and that's in your information tonight. And then if um, you wanted to get more information on student yield factors, that's available on the strategic planning website at that address. Um, is there a utilization target for these schools? Now, um, Baltimore County does not typically come up with utilization targets for the boundary. 
That said, the primary, one of the primary objectives, like we said earlier, is to reduce overcrowding in Baltimore Highlands and provide capacity relief to that school. Uh, so factors that you want to consider when you're looking at that, and you'll need to consider, are the enrollment projections. There is a detailed, um, in your handouts tonight, there's a detailed paper on the enrollment projections. There's 10-year projections in there telling you how each one of your schools is going to go over the next 10 years. Also, the plan developments, which we know are minimal, but you'll have that information as well. What is the most current and detailed enrollment data? So right now you're working with the uh, school year 2016-17 um, students, so students from last year. And this because the 17-18 information really isn't finalized until the first week of October. It's always the official count is the September 30th count. And so that information um, won't be available to October. And then we can't geographically put it on a map. So once we get that information, it takes time to um, put that information, make it available on a map to do the counts by boundaries. If it becomes important that if the counts are um, changing or there's differences, we are monitoring that and we will let you know if counts are coming in higher or lower than what the projections are indicating. So you can um, factor that in when you're developing your um, options. Under what conditions may a student uh, choose to stay at their boundary school if it comes effect? Um, this is um, all by policy in Rule 5140. You have a copy of that rule in your uh, handouts tonight. Special permission transfers will be approved during the first year of a boundary change for students currently enrolled in fourth to fifth grade. So they're terminal grade years. So fourth and fifth graders will, uh, can put in a special permission transfer to remain at their school. If a student who meets the criteria above has siblings currently enrolled in the affected school, the sibling will be given the option of remaining at the affected school through his or her terminal grade year as well. Uh, what is state rated capacity and how is it determined? Uh, it's defined by the Maryland Department of Education and it's calculated based on the number of teaching stations in a school. Uh, classrooms in the school and how they are used. So there are certain, in elementary schools, there are certain rooms that are not counted towards capacity. It does not include relocatables. Relo as they add relocatable units on the properties, they are not, the, as the state rate of capacity does not go up. And then um, there are room size and use standards for what may or may not be counted towards the state rate of capacity. And there's also um, a handout in tonight's um, packet that tells you a little bit more about how they calculated the number of students they used to calculate it and that type of information and what rooms and rooms are not used in calculating that. Um, the Cropper GIS has produced an interactive map for us and there's a link available on the website to that map. This map will allow you to zoom in um, to the neighborhoods and see the planning blocks and information. And as you develop the options tonight, We'll go back and that information will also be loaded in here so you'll be able to actually go in and zoom in on some of the options that you've created and look and share that information so your the community can look um, at detail at these areas and the options that you've created. Um, just to go a little bit over some of the things that we found um, in the exercise that we did last week, the opportunity analysis, the present state overview, the strengths, um, we all said the strengths were walking zones, strong family support, neighborhood identity, and natural boundaries. And some of the limitations were the compact walk boundaries that you identified and the natural boundaries. Some of these things can be strengths and limitations depending how you uh, look at them. But there's also another handout in there um, in your packet that gives all the detailed information that each group had on the opportunities analysis. For future state, the opportunities, uh, balance diversity among schools, which is very important, um, decrease overcrowding, create equitable opportunities, uh, some of the challenges, uh, kids will be moved from walking zones to buses uh, and creating a new sense of community with the new um, planning blocks and the new boundaries. Um, so when you did the exercise of reviewing planning blocks, you came up with a suggestion to uh, modify planning block 12. The maps that you have tonight um, have taken that into consideration and we've split planning block 12. It's now planning block 12 and planning block 56. Uh, and it was split so that um, it, previously it was two different kind of courts. Um, it was uh, the north 
twin uh, circle way and south twin circle way, and we split that to um, have one on each side. Um, and the results were there's now 41 um, children in planning block 12 and 44 K through 5 students in planning block 56. And all of your information tonight has been updated with that. Um, also, it's important to say as you're developing these options tonight, if you see additional planning block splits that you think need to be made, this isn't final. You can still make splits. If you think there's something that needs to be done as you're developing options, you can consider those splits for the future. So none of this is in stone. You can still modify these. And I'd like to hand it over to Ms. Bell. Sure. Um, good evening, everybody. Um, so as Ms. Appler said, we are going to um, engage in some group work today, and so thank you. Before we do that, I just wanted to review the um, group norms um, for effective collaboration. Um, so first norm is just being inclusive and allowing for adequate time for processing. Um, you know, um, also allow for time, um, wait time bef between responses. Um, secondly, again, just spend adequate time considering how each change will impact um, diverse stakeholders. Um, thirdly, just being mindful and using um, the boundary study guidelines as a lens um, as you are drafting options, um, looking at the data, looking at the demographics, et cetera, um, as you move forward in this work. Um, if by chance conflict arises, just being mindful of your own body language and tone and trying to just stay rooted in I statements. Um, the last uh, norm that's not up there is just um, um, accepting non-closure and expecting non-closure. Um, just the idea that this is a process, so um, all questions might not be answered tonight, but we do um, our best to answer any questions that you have. Um, and just remembering it, it is a process. So with that said, um, you already are in um, small groups. Um, they're based on color. It looks like everybody's in the right spot, yeah? Okay, great. Um, so you're gonna have um, 35 minutes to work together and create um, draft options. You see there are um, oversized maps on your tables as well as smaller ones. Um, we want you to um, sketch boundaries um, and create, um, you know, create draft options. One thing I will say is that as you create these draft options, Mike is here and um, he'll be able to look at your data and um, uh, compute the um, demographic numbers for you as you create different um, draft options. So you won't be in the blind about you know, demographics and things like that. After um, you spend some time drafting options, we will come back for a debrief. Um, I won't go over that yet, but just know we'll have an opportunity to kind of look at the options and just uh, look at the strengths of each and also assess the limitations of each. Oh, so Ms. Appler is gonna talk a little bit about the data. Okay, so as you're developing your options tonight, you're gonna see on your table, there's some larger sketch maps, and then there that are just blank. They just have all the planning block and the K through five counts. And then there's some smaller 11 by 17 ones as well. And we put crowns on all the tables. So as you're developing these, you can kind of, um, mark in your own boundaries. And what will the happen is um, there'll be um, Mike, Chris, and I will each have a group and we'll work through these boundaries with you. And the type of information, as you're moving these planning blocks, you're gonna get the type of information that's up here. So you're, we have the current SRC of the building, so you'll see the existing state. So the top table here is the existing state. It shows you that Baltimore Highlands is 123% over capacity, land down to 156. And then the bottom table is what will dynamically change as you move these planning blocks. So we put in the new state rated capacity for lands down, so that's built in. So once you put the 709 in there, you can see that currently lands down's at 69%. So once they're at a capacity, if we move no blocks, they would be at 69%. So, and then as you move blocks, those numbers will change. You'll get statistics on the utilization, the over under now, like how much they're over or under their state rated capacity, a minority, farms, which is free and reduced lunch, how many students are on free and reduced lunch, and then your, English, your percent of English language learners. So you'll be able to see all those percentages change as you move planning blocks. 
Um, so just as a reminder, some things you want to consider as you're drafting options. One, just studying the geography. So looking at the current boundary and then maybe comparing it to um, the shifts that you're um, suggesting um, to make. You want to look at where the lines shift away from the current boundary versus the option. Um, pay attention to like the road networks as well as um, any natural features like parks and waterways. And also I think conversation was had last time just about like um, walker routes and even um, you know school bus, bus routes as well. Um, you wanna of course look at the tables. So um, review the balance of enrollment, identify any imbalances that might um, exist. Um, question maybe why the imbalances exist and ex examine and talk about ways to, to bring balance, balance to it. Um, and then lastly, um, but not least, um, you wanna review the objective and consideration. So keeping in mind rule 1280 as you work together, um, how do the options support the boundary study objectives and considerations, and just working together to um, examine ways to improve the alignment between um, rule 1280 and um, the draft options that you create. Um, just a reminder, what you all come up with today is not going to be set in stone. Um, it's just an opportunity to kind of brainstorm and come, come up with multiple um, options, um, multiple draft options. The focus is not on picking the best solution yet, um, so don't stress yourself with that. It's just um, for you all to come together and look at many different options um, um, prior to making a final recommendation. So as we did last time, we're asking that um, each person takes a role in the group. Um, one person we're asking to be the discussion guide, so just monitoring the time. As I said, we'd have 35 minutes. And also just ensuring that everybody is um, able to um, express their opinions. So you know, if you're more dominant or you notice somebody's more dominant in, in the group, you might ask them to step back. Or if you notice that somebody's more quiet, you might ask them to particip participate a little bit more. That would be your role as a discussion guide. The reporter can be more than one. You'll be the person who kind of shares out what um, options the group came up with or your committee came up with. The scribe, if there's any like um, uh, thoughts or ideas that come up that you feel would be important to record, the scribe would write that down. And then lastly, I, I think you all have a sheet on your, um, on your tables, any questions that come up, um, if one person could record that, okay? Okay, um, we're not going there yet. Okay, so are there any questions about um, what you're about to do? Yes. Say it again. No, mm -hmm. the, what, um, the way this is set up is that on the um, Excel spreadsheets, we actually have five tabs. You can create as many options as you want. Your group can come up with three options. Your group can come up with two. You could come up with five. And then when we report out, we'll see what kind of similarities there are, what kind of differences. They give different perspectives on what people yeah. are coming up with and what we're thinking about, and we'll yeah. have a conversation. Sure. Yes, and um, you, there's 11 by 17 ones that you can put them on, or you can draw on the big maps as well to make those changes. Any other questions? Okay, great. So um, we'll be around to assist.
Okay, so we want you to um, take at least one more minute to kind of finalize your options and then we'll move into the second portion of, of our work together, okay? <coughs> Thank you. Okay, so we wanna um, move on to the next phase. We wanna give you a couple of minutes, maybe like five minutes to look at the options that you've drafted and we want you to um, analyze them. So we want you to look at the strengths and the limitations of each and just be, be prepared to share that with the group. And also if there are any concerns, challenges or suggestions related to the planning, planning blocks. 
So just take a few minutes to look at the options that you've created. Um, as a group, discuss the limitations and strengths of each option and just um, be prepared to present that um, to the committees and also any challenges or concerns um, regarding the planning, planning blocks. So we'll come back together in about five minutes.
Okay, sure. Okay, so we're gonna um, go ahead and regroup. And um, what we'd like is for each group to um, share their options. And again, just talk about the, the strengths and limitations of each. And then of course, any um, challenges regarding or concerns regarding the, the planning blocks. Um, does one group wanna go first? You guys ready? Okay. <coughs> We tried to simplify it by just showing you what blocks could potentially change rather than looking at four completely different maps. So we have them colored, but just so you know. Okay, we had our first draft, um, which we called the minimal change one. Um, in that first draft, I believe we are moving in, in every one of our options, we moved planning block 15. So I'll give you a moment to find planning block 15. In every single option, that one moved. In planning block one, which was our minimal one, we also added planning block 56, going from Baltimore Highlands to Lansdowne. And that was planning block, uh, our plan number one. So I think that left Baltimore Highlands at like 104 oh, percent. Yep, I can tell you that. Yep, uh, that left Baltimore Highlands at 104 percent, Lansdowne at 82, and Riverview at 101. So we kind of needed to do a little more moving. <laughs> Um, plan number two, we called that the some straights and some McDowell Lane plan. Um, in that one, we had planning block 15 moving, of course. Then we had planning block 16 and planning block 73 moving. Those three planning blocks moving from Baltimore Highlands to Lansdowne. At that point, that put Baltimore Highlands at 97%, Lansdowne at 88%, and Riverview at 101 Then we had our everything bagel option here, which was plan was number three. Um, this was moving a whole lot of things from Baltimore Highlands to the lands down. Um, for this one, we moved. That was all, the, all the zones we talked about before. So it's that. 15, Gallery, 56, 16, and planning block four. So State Street and McDowell and that little loop that we took before. The twin circle loop, yeah. All of those moving to uh, lands down. That put Baltimore Highlands at 89%, lands down at 94, and Riverview was still at 101. So then our final plan tried to do something about that 101 at Riverview. Um, in that one, we moved, still our planning block 15. Uh, we also moved 16, we also moved 73. We left the twin circles where it was. Um, 56 did not move in that case. However, 55 moved from Riverview to Lansdowne. That was the street that is split currently between Lansdowne and Riverview. Um, initially, we had talked about maybe trying to send them to Riverview, but that put them way over capacity at that point. So then we tried flipping it and sending the other half of the street to Lansdowne. Um, at that point, utilization for Baltimore Highlands was 97, Lansdowne was 95, and Riverview was 93. Um, and we didn't find any st statistically uh, significant changes in any of the demographics, more than 5%, when we did any of these changes. Any questions? <laughs> did you have anything, Melissa? Patrick? No? On to the next group? Okay. So, next group? You guys ready? Um, so we didn't use the big map, so we apologize. And we didn't come up with any clever names. We apologize. <laughs> um, you want to start with the number one? <laughs> okay, so the first planning blocks, the first option that we came up with, um, it's actually, yeah. So we just went with moving planning block number four and 16 out of the Baltimore Highlands community. We didn't really go into the other side. Um, and it really didn't drastically change anything. Lansdowne was still way under capacity and Baltimore Highlands was still above capacity. Didn't do anything really as changing the farms and the minorities or utilization. So we kind of scrapped that one uh, and went a little bit further. Um, 
we went kind of what you guys did on the last one. So we add it. We knew we needed to add kids. So we added planning block number 15, planning block number 56, and planning block number 14. Um, it still changed the numbers a little bit more as far as we, every, both schools were still under capacity. Um, Baltimore Hollands was under at 84 and Lansdowne was under at 11. Uh, utilization was 84 and 98. Um, the farms were 76, 74, and the minorities were 73, 57. So the farms kind of went equal, but the minority didn't really change. So then we went um, oh, for number two for us, where we did planning block number 15 and planning block number 13. Uh, which we found really even the numbers. Um, Baltimore Hollands was under at 33, and Lansdowne was under at 62. Um, utilization was 93 and 91. Uh, farms was 75 and 75. A minority was 67 and 61. Um, and then to go a little bit further, the English language was 18 and 11. So we found that one to be a very even change across on the numbers. Okay, and then the last one, um, we went a, just a little bit further to kind of add a couple more kids to Lansdowne, and we did uh, planning block number 15, planning block number 56, and planning block number 14, which pretty much kept, uh, dropped Baltimore Hollands to at capacity. Um, the utilization was, of course, 99, and Lansdowne was under at 86. Uh, farms was pretty even. Minority was still a little bit higher. Baltimore Highlands at 68 over 59. So, and that was it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, we didn't do that one. Okay, sorry, we have one more. <laughs> um, we went with um, going just a little bit further down on the Holland Village side to increase the numbers. Um, so we went with planning block 15, 56, 14, 12, and 11. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> when I see the numbers, I didn't want to stop. So 15, 56, 14, 12, and 11. Kind of just stayed along the, the boundary line on the side. Um, and it was kind of an even, it kind of evened out the numbers as well. Uh, both schools were under capacity, Baltimore Highlands 54 and Lansdowne 41. So at 90% and 94% at utilization. Uh, the farms were pretty even. Baltimore Highlands was at 73. Lansdowne was at 77. Uh, minority was pretty even at 65 and 62. And the English language was really even at 15 and 14%. So and that's what we came up with. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <coughs> Hi, so we came up with two scenarios. Our first scenario was to move uh, planning box 15 and 56 with to Lansdowne Elementary, also moving planning block 39 to Riverview Elementary. Uh, this kind of leveled everything out on the numbers. Uh, Baltimore Highlands would be at 105%, Lansdowne would be at 79%, and Riverview Elementary School would be at 108%. Um, our next scenario also included moving planning block 15 along with planning block 13 to Lansdowne Elementary while moving also moving planning block 39 to Riverview Elementary again. Um, Riverview Elementary's numbers stayed at 108 percent while Lansdowne stayed at 86 percent and Baltimore Highlands went to 94 um, percent. Our scenarios also included that the schools are projected to have numbers change in the beginning of next year. So we, we considered the fact that Riverview is supposed to have a decline in their numbers along with, I believe, Lansdowne was also supposed to have a decline in their numbers. And uh, Lansdowne will continue to increase. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, you know, I want to say thank you for all of your hard work. I'm going to pass it over now to Ms. Appler. Okay. Thank you. Uh, those are some really good scenarios that you've come up with tonight. Um, so I guess the next steps. Uh, so I guess um, real quick, 
Did anyone in any of their scenarios have any additional changes that they'd like to see for planning blocks? Okay. Um, so, um, we, do we have consensus on the way the planning blocks are? Now, if you do come back and want to change them later, we can still um, change them, but we're just trying to get consensus on the planning blocks that we have right now. Okay. Um, when we get into, um, for, what, for our next meeting, what we're going to do, our next steps, is we're going to take back um, the scenarios that you came up with. We're going to um, prepare the maps that look um, like the maps you have now with the information and data on the um, bottom. And then we'll come back and you can look at them next week or um, in two weeks and compare them to the considerations, the projections, the development patterns to see what would work uh, best. And we'll try to vote and figure out which ones you would like to take to the public information session. Okay, so you'll be able to go over all the considerations and then um, we'll do a um, consensus building exercise where you can figure out which ones you want to move on. Um, so I want to thank everybody for all their hard work tonight. Uh, the scenarios look great. And uh, we'll be back here October 11th, uh, right here at the high school uh, from 6 to 7.30. So I'll see you at the next meeting.